All right, hello everyone. My name is Brittany Duong. I'm a third year psychology GPS major and a TRIO scholar. TRIO is a federal program housed under the Student Success Initiatives that aims to support low income or first generation college students in their academic journey. With me today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Professor Marco Lavarado, a first gen faculty. So Professor Lavarado, please introduce yourself, including things such as your department, maybe your major that when you went to undergraduate and the year that you graduated. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. So, uh, well, my name is Marco Lavorato. I'm an associate professor in computer science. My, um, so my, my, my path was actually international. I studied um, in Italy up to my PhD. So I got my PhD in telecommunication engineering in Padova, um, a beautiful city in Italy. And then I moved for my postdoctoral studies um, here in the US. At, I, was at, I had a joint affiliation at Stanford and USC. They called me the commuting postdoc. I was you know, going back and forth between the two institutions. And then I joined UCI as a faculty in 2013. Awesome, thank you so much for sharing. So during this interview, we just wanna have this genuine conversation that highlights first-gen experiences and maybe even celebrates the accomplishments of this first-gen community. So one of the first questions I have for you is how does being first-gen impact your perception of the world? Well, um, I don't know about the world, but for sure, the, you know, it was not easy to um, to figure out how things work. So you have a limited amount of information, actually, on how you know, like your your career path would, would work, how you would um, you know, like um, figure out your life. Essentially, I mean, it's it, uh, it's a lot more difficult if you don't have clear examples of what you want to accomplish. And I'm not saying you know, our parents are not examples. I'm saying that, you know, they don't have a similar path as the one you wanna, you wanna take. So I think that for a lot of first generation students, like the, the main, um, you know, like the, the perception of the world is, um, is somehow maybe, um, you know, limited to what our, our parents' experiences are, what our relative experience are. So it's not, um, you know, as complete. As, as the perception of that other people can can have, even if again maybe we have other other things that other people don't have, right? So, so yeah, yeah, I completely balance. agree. My parents, um, they they're very supportive, and I feel like it's such a blessing to have. But they may not understand like what I'm going through in terms of academics or maybe career path wise. I might not have as many options, or I'm not aware of all these options because. Uh, my parents don't have that higher level of education that might help guide me along the way. Yeah, so you know my experience is is similar. So my my parents, I don't think they completed middle school actually, and so, but uh, and my my father died when I when I was when I was seven years old. So my mom was you know like was raised me, and I think in her mind was clear that uh, you know I like she wanted. All of us, all like my my brother and sister and, and me, to study and, and accomplish, you know, and get a, a, as much as the education as, as we wanted. But um, and you know, we made a lot of sacrifice for for that as as, as well. But I, I I didn't have information about even what a degree was at the time, right? I, I would study. Uh, I wouldn't know, you know, when I joined as a as a PhD student, I didn't know what a, a PhD. A PhD is. I don't know what what the implications of having a PhD are, and you know you don't know what academic life is. You don't know what uh, you don't have just you know, a lot of information. But I think um, you know I may have had an advantage compared to many other people, which was a very clear you know objective and determination of like, towards a, a certain goal, and and it worked. Like you know, my I'm a faculty. My my sister. Is a lawyer, and my father, my my brother has a has a software company. So we all, you know, figure out how to do it. But it, it took some effort, and maybe some some additional effort. Yeah, that's amazing. I feel like as a first gen, maybe our motivation might be a little higher because we definitely want to explore, and so maybe we might achieve more. But maybe sometimes it's a little harder to acknowledge it because at the same time we're feeling like we don't know where we're what we're doing, or maybe it's a little harder to navigate that path. So. Did you ever deal with imposter syndrome when you were in college or was that something that 
maybe you felt later on um, as a faculty? I would say more later on. So I think that in um, like while in, in, in college and then as a PhD student, you know, my, my motivation was somehow crystalline, like was very, uh, you know, I didn't have that perception <clears throat> or the time to really, you know, doubt about, doubt myself, <laughs> you know, my, so well, in, in Italy, tuition is, is, it's very, it's very tiny. I mean, it's, school is all public, um, you know, we, you, the fees are, I think, a couple of thousand dollars per year, but we wouldn't be able to afford that. And for sure, we wouldn't be able to afford my, you know, um, me not working, uh, not getting an, an, an income. So I was, you know, I had to be one of the top students to get fellowships, to get into all the benefits, like free housing <clears throat> and all the, um, all the benefits that our government in Italy give us. But you have to be like in the top 2%. So for me, like motiva motivation was very, was very easy. <laughs> you know, it came as either you are one of the best or you don't or you don't, you don't study and, and you know, you, your life changes completely. So for me, like during, during college, I never doubted myself really. And also, um, you know, I, I had to be one of the, of the best. So it was no, no imposter syndrome <laughs> for me, but for the, as, as a faculty, of course, you know, you, you see all these people with, you know, like uh, who maybe ha are more, um, I don't know, more familiar with, this kind of, of life and all the families are you know faculty and you know they have all these connections and so sometimes you do feel a little bit like the, the poor guy in town like you know the <laughs> you know like trying to figure out how things work and maybe you know you I don't know it's just a feeling of like a different feeling because of your of the environment where you, you grow like when you yes, grow definitely. And like so yes yeah. as a faculty a little bit from time to time as a, as a college student, you know, for me, it was just pure drive toward an objective. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, deviate from, from that, but yeah. I think that's very inspiring. I feel like as a first-gen student, you have this clear um, path that you kind of paid for yourself and you stuck with it, which is something that my knowledge people have, even if they're not first-gen, like they might be concerned about what their next step is, but it's amazing to see that you, found your path and you stuck with it and that you're here today. So when you were in so that, that, no, that that's, that's, one second, just to clarify, I didn't, so I didn't know exactly what the, the path was going to be. Mm -hmm. For sure, you walk it very, you know, very, very determined. So even I didn't know exactly, you know, what to study, what degree and what, mm -hmm. what you know, what the path was going to be. But I, you need to be very determined and you know, just, mm -hmm. um, just go. <laughs> and, yeah and do, and do what, what you have to do um otherwise you know like again you don't it, it's just uh, harder i think yes for sure definitely and yes, i think sorry, that's something sorry go ahead sorry i interrupted you no 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 worries no i was just going to say that um that determination is something that i think a lot of people might lack but it's very inspirational to see that like you knew that you, what you had to do, like not, not so to say that you knew the path, but you knew that you needed to reach that top and perform academically well to get what you needed to support yourself and maybe your family. So that's something that definitely a lot of first-gen students might feel like the family dynamics, there might be some pressure or there just might be like, you're motivated by your family to do well because you know, they've given you so much and they've sacrificed so much for you. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, um, good and bad at, at the same time, like having that kind of support, knowing that your parents made all those sacrifices. Of course, you have that motivation. Of course, you, you know, you have that objective in mind, you are determined, but you know, when you, uh, you may feel from time to time that you are not ac accomplishing as much as you wanted. And of course you have that est extra weight thinking that it's not only your, uh, your burden, but it's also a burden of, of everybody who is supporting you. So, you know, like success comes at, with extra joy maybe and fa little failures or failures come with, with an extra weight, I think, and for, for people who, who have families who invest, right, in, 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 mm -hmm. that, in, in that objective. So I think, you know, um, it comes as 
as some, a sort of advantage if you want from a point of view of, of drive, of you know, be, feeling the need, the, the push to do something. But you know, you need to also be careful about you know giving you some slack and giving you some um, like room to you know to to fail and to experience different different things. And um, it's not it's not it's never like a just a you know a, a straight path and it's never like you know with no bumps along the way i mean there is always something you know even in my during my studies like you know i was again one of the top students but not consistently in five years like i had you know maybe stretches of six months where things were not going that great and it's important to uh, to still feel that that you can make it and that you know, things are gonna go, but that can go well. So I think, you know, it's important not to feel, you know, too much of a burden, right? You know, try to, um, I, I, and again, this is my, my experience, like, you know, just try to recover from those and know, know that it's, it's your life in the end, right? Not the life of everybody around you necessarily, so. Yeah, I completely agree. I feel like um, we push ourselves so hard to do our best that sometimes we don't give ourselves that that break that you mentioned. But um, I always feel like when you hit those like road bumps or like you kind of fail in a sense, it's a way for you to learn from yourself. So in a way, like failure is a good thing because we maybe go on it, we try a different route or we like learn a little bit ourselves. So when you were in college or I guess as a PhD student, what surprised you about your college experience and like what would you consider valuable like resources or just like what was so essential to you succeeding? So I have to say that, you know, in, in college, like as an undergrad student, I was lucky enough to find roommates and, and colleagues in my, in my degree who became my friends and sort of helped me along along the, the path, like you know, showing me maybe a little bit how things would would work, also helping me, you know, in my you know, in my understanding of of you know, how to study, how to do some things that you know we we haven't experienced necessarily. And I, this happened. I have to say, I was I was blessed. Like you know, along my life and, and my career, this happened. You know, cons consistently, I had always had that friend or that roommate or that PhD student in my same group who would sort of became my not my mentor but my like the peer you you have that you know you can talk with and I think that's very important to find you know people who are experiencing the same who are going through similar you know trajectories in, in their life that can can um, you know sort of um, you know, help you understanding better. You know, as a, as a, I think the biggest surprise to me was academic life. When I, you know, when I became a PhD student, I didn't know. Again, I didn't know what what be, becoming a PhD student uh, would mean. Even so, I just knew that you know I was attracted towards um, more intellectual work, and so and I was a good student. I had already maybe one or two publications at the time. But I didn't know that, you know, how you, um, I don't know, like, like you, how you become part of a community and that works. Like, I, I wouldn't know even like that, you know, that kind of science would, would exist. Or, you know, I, as, a, as a kid, I would read books about philosophy, about physics, about everything. Not as a kid, like as a teenager, maybe. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Sorry, like that was wrong, wrong translation from, from Italian. But, um, you know, so I would know that you know, science was, you know, like scientists would uh, like exist, right? But you don't know um, like how the community works, how, the, you know, how what a professorship means, what being part of that community means. So that, that was the biggest surprise, I think. Other than that, I think there is a main difference between, you know, like our studies, in Italy and in Europe and in the US. And it is that in, in Italy, when you join a degree, your the, the sequence of courses, the sequence of, of what you do is fixed for everybody essentially. So there's no much 
you know, like oh surprise, I had to do that instead of instead of this, and maybe that would have been, you know, better. Everybody does the same, so it's <laughs> you know it's a lot easier <laughs> to to figure that out. But when you you know when you go, uh, you know, when you try to become a, a professor, you, you don't you don't know what what, what that means. Yeah, I and, and I'm and I'm still surprised, right? like, you know, like a lot of, even up like now that I'm, you know, almost a, a full professor at this point, I still, you still find, you know, things about your, your new world that sort of surprise you. In a way. Yeah, I think definitely navigating your own path is um, something that is a little difficult, especially as you said, like education systems are different in Italy and the U.S. And so finding that community that you mentioned with your roommates, or maybe your classmates is definitely something that um, is very helpful in motivating you or helping you like get advice or maybe move a different way so that you can continue to find the answers to your questions and continue succeeding. Yeah, you know, like somehow we are, okay, like that is my experience. Like I was busier than and more worried about others because I, again, had to worry about you know how much money I would have, like how to to, to go to the. I I needed to be very efficient from the beginning. So you don't have uh, very effective from the beginning. You don't have that time to figure things out because you need mm -hmm. to you know, be on top of things from the beginning to to get that fellowship, to access that that thing. Or you don't even know maybe that you know there are those opportunities. So I think that having like people around you who help you figuring that out and that maybe have, I wouldn't say like necessarily an, an easier, an easier path, but maybe a little more relaxed approach, right? <laughs> that, that helps. Uh, so, so yeah, I, that was really, uh, I was lucky. From, from that point of view. Mm -hmm. So um, to close off, um, I know we talked a little bit about this throughout the interview, but what advice do you have for current and future first-gen students regarding maybe success or just how um, words of encouragement for them as they're continuing to navigate their journey? So again, as, as a, you know, I, I think that studying and that being successful like, is, is our right. So it's not something that is given to us. So don't feel like you are being given something like either you don't deserve or that is a present from from something it's not only a right that we have to be successful to become what we want i think it's also a benefit a present we give to to society because our talents are going to help you know if you if the right to study if the right to be uh, to become part of you know intellectual um, club if you want of like people who can somehow make a contribution in many different ways was reserved to few people humanity you know and society would would be worse so i think you know it's very important that you feel that that it's your right to to express your talent and it's you don't feel you know overwhelmed or you know by uh, by 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 what's happening and, and you know that it is what what is yours and you know so you own it in, in, a, in a way and i think that is what um you know helped me a lot with knowing that i was you know i i had the, the i had the talent i had the the right to to succeed and and of course you have to fight it more but you know so so feel it that you know it's your you know, your objective is also something that, that benefit benefit everybody and that it's not only um, it's not given to you like it, it's something that should be yours <laughs> somehow so so that that i think it's my it's a little bit of, of of encouragement for me to pursue your path don't and and don't don't give up and i think you know like my suggestion is be determined be um like have like you know have like drive towards your objective but don't obsess because that that's gonna you know maybe you can i mean you can do it for for that much time i mean at some point it's gonna it's gonna um 
it's gonna be a weight on you. You know, I, you know, in my life, I experienced many things. Unfortunately, again, I lost my father when I was when I was little. I I I lost my mom when I was twenty five. I had to, you know, I always had to, you know, to, to walk fast, to run, to run, to run, to run, and then I think at some point you you um, you feel it on on your shoulder as as well. But you did that. So I think you know. Don't think only about about your your main objective. Like think of, think also about your life, about you know enjoying what's happening around you, about you know like being yourself. Also um, enjoying all the different phases of your life. That's that's very important uh, because that's gonna make you a, maybe a more complete person later on. And you know, and while while you you accomplish what you wanna accomplish. You you succeed in what you want you want to succeed. You also want to not to miss all that you know, little things that are important. When you look back, when you're old like me and you look back, <laughs> you know, then you want to have done all, all of that. So, so that that's my recommendation. I'm sure I'm sure you know all of you have a, the potential to to succeed, but we have this, this extra weight on on our shoulder, and that shouldn't become overwhelming. Thank you. That was beautifully said. I definitely resonated with how you're saying that our success is more of a right. It's not something that we should feel that's given to us. It's something that we have the ability to succeed and share our talents with the world. So I think that was very beautifully said. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa. So at this time, I want to thank you again for taking this time to speak with me. And I hope that your words inspire others to continue on their journey and maybe like reach out and seek that community that we always talk about. Thank you, Brittany, and, and good luck everybody with your with your career and your life. Thank you so much.